I'm the first girl to do any writing in this office since the war. Writing? Is that what this is about? I thought you were doing that to get close to Paul. What do you want? Are you just some busy little bee building a hive out in Brooklyn? I'd like to be the first woman creative director at this agency. This is Peggy Olsen. She's an inspiring character from one of the greatest television series, Mad Men. Anybody mind if I take off my pants? <laughs> the show was set in the times where women weren't respected in business at all. She went from this innocent, eager to please secretary all the way to the top. I'm in a very good place right now. Her story, it's about a modern woman who takes charge of her own destiny. But how did she do it? Peggy, can you get me some coffee? No. Even though Peggy is just a fictional character, this is one of the most realistic stories on television about a career woman. Let's see what did it take for her to be an ambition woman in a man's world. Coming from a religious family in Brooklyn, Peggy graduated from a secretary school and started working as a secretary in this ad agency on Madison Avenue. Men still needed to know how to sell product to women. That's where she had the chance to share her idea. Here's your basket of kisses. Basket of kisses? That's cute. Where did you hear that? I just From there, she was asked to write the copy of the ad as an assignment in addition to her secretary role. One assignment led to the next, until one day... Miss Olson, you are now a junior copywriter. What? Her hard work got her a job that wasn't just fetching things for men. She put her career above everything else, showing everybody that she was valuable and deserved to be treated as equal and with respect. Clients were happy with her and her work, only with a few exceptions. And frankly, Mohawk is going to insist on a regular copywriter. Someone with a penis. I'll work on that. She learned a lot from her boss and manager, Don Draper. She didn't really get the recognition or the appreciation that she wanted, no matter how hard she continued to work. Stop asking for things. So that's a sign to look elsewhere. And that's what she did. What do you want to get paid? By season six, she moved to a new agency where she was... The copy chief at one of the top 25 ad agencies in the country. You're not even 30. I'm jealous. She experienced a different set of challenge as a female manager. In the final episode, we can see that she became this seasoned professional who was ready for more adventures to come. Now you know the story, let's rewind back to see exactly what she did and what we can learn from it. Everyone starts out innocent, a bit nervous, and not very good. I did, and she did too. Oh God, no, I really shouldn't have told you. You shouldn't have told me. But what she did well at the beginning was learning how the place work by making work friends. Here we have the creative department, the talent, home sweet home. Regardless whether you're a man or woman, sometimes you're going to get treated poorly. Why is it that every time a man takes you out to lunch around here, you're, you're the dessert? A very useful business skill that I learned from her is that she kept her cool in these situations. No, we could go to the zoo. The office is going to empty out any second. We could push the couch in front of the door. Keeping cool is not about being silent or allowing things to happen. It's about reacting calm. I should get back to work. We're shopping. So you can take a step back to reset the boundaries. Paul, I think we've misunderstood each other. Also give a way for the other person to get out of this awkward situation. I'm sure she was angry, but watch what she did afterward. She went into the bathroom to release her emotions. Very professional. What was interesting to me in this scene, we don't know what happened to this girl. She saw, this is what it looks like if you focus on your emotion. And she looked at herself and said, this is not who I want to be, so let's move on. Like turning the situation around, calling it a misunderstanding, and then you have yourself and another work friend. That's how Peggy put her career above everything else. She focused on that goal, and every decision just becomes so clear what she should 
and should not spend her attention on. Can you believe this girl? I don't know. Can you? I gotta admire you. Women usually want to please. You know I need to make men feel at ease. Who told you that? You can see Packy's transformation both on the outside and the inside. You rarely hear that she wants to make more money or buy more things that she can't afford. All we want to do is please you. Mostly you really hear from her is about making a great ad. Create something of lasting value. Taking one more step back, choosing to work on Madison Avenue gave her the chance to meet and work with Dawn, who got great skills and willing to mentor her. That doesn't necessarily happen in reality on everybody's first job. When I first started working, I didn't stay at a job until I found someone who got a great opportunity to offer and a mentorship for me. Back to Peggy. Don brought her along on his success and pushed her through each plateau. When she got to learn from the best, people start hearing stories about how great she is. Listen to how Ted, her next boss, talked about her. I looked at your book, and I saw somebody who was writing like every product was for them. No cliches, no homilies, no formula. Well, being unconventional has its downside too. She had to deal with criticism from other men. Person? Because I'd really like to meet him. I'm the person you need to impress right now. You looked at my book. What more can and I say? And also from other women. You know, 26 is still very young. All while not getting paid very well. I would say that's partly because she wasn't good at negotiating. Watch how she asked. Did I get a raise? No. <laughs> Congratulations, more work and more responsibility. This was not the moment to push it because she just got an opportunity to show what she got. <laughs> But the second time when they ask her help again... Yeah, you'd be perfect for it. Why? Because you're a woman. And we like your point of view. She really should negotiate. If I were her, I would say, I love to dedicate my time to offer my opinion, deliver a few ideas, and perhaps even help developing the copy. Is that what you're looking for? Of course, then they would say, yes, that would be great. Then I would say, what can I get in return? Then they could either bullshit and say, oh, we could buy you lunch. Or they could say, if you do this, we could discuss the possibility of you moving to a copywriter role. In the show, she still got promoted right after this, but she quickly noticed nothing is gonna hand handed down to her if she didn't know how to ask. What do you want? I need to speak with you. Honey, I have a 6.30 dinner reservation, and unless- Catching someone in a hurry might be easier for them to say yes if it's something small like- I need my own office. It's hard to do business and be credible when I'm sharing with a Xerox machine. Freddie Rumson's office has been vacant for some time. I think I should have it. It's yours. There are 30 men out there who didn't have the balls to ask me. You can see just how important timing is in the next time when she asks. I've been thinking about my situation here. And I'm so grateful to you for all you've done. I just... Well, you know, I'm paid very little. My secretary doesn't respect me because I make $71 more a week than she does. Maybe we need to get you a cheaper secretary. Paul Kinsey does the same work that I do. And not as well sometimes. And I don't know if you read in the paper, but they passed a law where women who do the same work as men will get paid the same thing. Equal pay. It's not a good time. It's not a good time for me, Don. Do you know how expensive this city is? It's not gonna happen, Peggy, not now. I'm fighting for paper. This was around. very awkward. It sounded like she was putting all her problem on her boss. If I would have to ask in this situation, here's what I would do. I know that the budget is tight around here now. But I really need to bring this up with you so you know what's going on on my side. I make X dollars per hour now and I would like to make X more per hour. It's going to match my pay with the rest of the copywriter and I can focus on working better and maybe take on even more accounts. Then he's going to say, I'm fighting for paper clips around here. I understand and I'm willing to wait 
if I can have your word that you will consider, and we can revisit this conversation in two months. This way, you're giving him a way out, and you're not just getting a definite no. When you bring in business again in the next two months, find the right time to revisit this conversation. It will be much harder for him to say no. Negotiation wasn't her best quality, but she had a lot to offer. Other than being a good writer and dedicating into exploring new ideas, she was great at presentations, capturing what the client wanted and closing the deals. Just watch how she can introduce Don casually and nicely. Without further ado, Donald Draper. Don. Is that what you're going to say? Don't worry about what she's going to say. I was going to say that every great ad is a story, and here to tell you that story is our creative director and partner. Draper. By now, I hope you notice that Peggy didn't spend her time drowning in negative thoughts, but instead always thinking, how can she thrive as a woman in her world? I don't think anyone wants to be one of a hundred colors in a box. The commitment is really all you need in becoming who you want to become. Today is not 1950s, but our world is challenging in our way. I hope her story will help you to find your focus around all the challenge. And if you enjoy this video, do share it with a friend who might find this useful. It will really help me out. We covered what I found most interesting things about her career, but as I was re-watching, it took seven hours, and I found that there's just so much that we can do a deep dive like this. Do let me know what you enjoy and want to hear more, so I can make more videos like this. Thank you so much for being with me today, and I wish you a great day ahead. And see you in the next one.